my name is uh, Kirk uh, Noble Bloodsworth. Um, uh, honorably discharged Marine from uh, Cambridge, Maryland. Uh, I'm also the first person in the United States to be freed from post by post-conviction uh, DNA testing. In 1984, I was an honorably discharged Marine. No criminal record or criminal history. I was charged with one of the most brutal crimes in our state's history, and that's the state of Maryland. I was accused of killing a nine-year-old child by the name of Dawn Hamilton, whom I never met. I, uh, she was a, a cute little nine-year-old child with a page boy haircut, never heard a soul, was out playing hide-go-seek one morning. Search ensued for the person last seen with her, and this person was described as being six foot five, curly blonde hair, bushy mustache, tan skin, and skinny. Uh, not skinny. My hair was as red as an apple back in those days, or pumpkin, depending on your point of view. But uh, I had cyber standard, I'm about six foot tall. Um, never met Dawn. As it turned out, after I was convicted twice, um, I had read a book by Joseph Wombaugh called The Blooding. And the first time uh, a new technology was ever used, uh, DNA, in a criminal case. It was two girls over there that were found brutally murdered and uh, sexually assaulted. And there was semen on the scene and on the bodies and it was tested. They both were the same, so they knew that the killer was, um, was the same guy, it was one guy. I wrote the prosecutor a letter in my case and said, look, I wanna this test to be done, and can you help me get it done? And she wrote me back a letter. Her name was Ann Brokeston. She said, we regret to inform you in the letter that the DNA has been inadvertently destroyed. I panicked for about five seconds. They were doing some underhanded stuff. They hid evidence about another suspect. So it come to me in that moment of despair that they didn't know where it was. So I got my lawyer, his name is Bob Morin, to go look one more time. Sure enough, uh, it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And uh, right before he gets ready to leave, he sees the court clerk in my second trial in the hallway and says, uh, Bob, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm looking for the Dawn Hamilton evidence in the Kirk Bloodsworth case. He said, no, I know where that's at. It was in the judge's closet in a paper bag in a cardboard box sitting on the floor. There was the evidence I needed. The rest is history. I became the first person in the United States to be freed by post-conviction DNA testing from a capital conviction, which was death row and double life. I received a full pardon from the governor. I received three hundred thousand dollars from my trouble. Um, but what puzzled me to burst was who killed Don Hamilton. We had to find that answer out. I was sitting in my office one day. They finally tested the evidence in the CODIS, and it was the same prosecutor, woman who called me a monster, in two trials, on the other line. She was calling me Mr. Bloodsworth this day though and uh, said we had an update on the Hamilton murder and would like to talk to you and I met her in town in my hometown and uh, she said we have a cold hit of the real killer of Don Hamilton and he was not six foot five he was five foot six and 160 pounds and the tragic thing about it was he slept in the same prison with me and a tear below me for five years. Never said a word. Dawn finally had justice. He pled guilty to her murder, did it alone while he was high. He said he just didn't remember I was in there for it. Dawn Hamilton finally had justice and so did I because of uh, DNA, dioxyribonucleic acid.